All right, hey, welcome back to Taste Panel for Chili Nerds, episode 156 today. All right, guys, today we're going to shift directions a little bit, and uh, hey, over the next couple shows, we're going to be taking a look at some fruit hot sauces, okay? So, that's some uh, hot sauces that use both peppers and incorporate some kind of fruit in the actual sauce itself. I know in the past we looked at quite a few of those sauces, but hey, it's uh, things come full circle, and uh, I feel that I'm really interested right at this moment in delving into some fruit sauces for something a little new and different, as we have not really done one in quite a while, at least to my memory. So anyway, guys, uh, today we're going to be returning to an old standard company, the Mild to Wild Chili and Herb Company, and uh, we're going to be looking at their Gale's Hard Cider Sauce today. All right, so uh, when you hear the word cider, I uh, what usually comes to mind is apples, okay? So I'm assuming here, even though this is the hard cider, the alcoholic version, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I'm thinking that we're going to have some apples in this sauce. Of course, probably no alcohol that gets boiled off in the making of the sauce. So... In any case, uh, yeah, 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 there it is, back with Mild to Wild. Hey, and before I continue, I just want to, uh, I just want to say a, a shout of thanks to Jim Campbell there, because uh, on his site, if you go check out the sauces at a Mild to Wild Pepper and Herb Company, you will find the taste panel videos posted on that site. So that's really cool. Thanks, Jim, for posting those and uh, giving us some extra publicity. So guys, go check that out. And uh, to be honest, uh, yeah, so hey, uh, yeah, Gail's Hard Cider Sauce says here, used for marinades, braising, rotisserie, flavoring of game, fowl, pig, and beast. Okay, so kind of putting that little medieval spin on it there uh, with their wording. Okay, and uh, all right, it says here, ingredients, Gale's Hard Cider, okay, chipotle peppers from the New World, all right, vinegar and spices, okay, so hey, guys, uh, yeah, kind of a dark sauce, we can uh, see we're returning also with the chipotle pepper, so uh, that might promise a little bit of smoky character in Gale's Hard Cider sauce, too. Uh, Again, I don't see where it's really mentioned on here. The uh, Mild to Wild uh, Pepper Company's not mentioned on the label here, but uh, this is uh, this is one of their products. I got this on their site, and uh, yeah, so uh, very good. Hey, let's delve into it and uh, see where it leads us in our quest for the perfect fruit sauce. So uh, let's see if the uh, apples do justice to those chipotle peppers in this particular sauce, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good flavor coming out of this. All right, guys, kind of, yeah, looking real thin like a Worcestershire sauce. Uh, kind of actually has that kind of character going on all around. Same color, kind of leaving a little bit of tracing there on the neck. And, uh, yeah, kind of really vinegar-looking, uh, liquidy body. So, hey, let's get a smell test and get on to tasting. Gale's hard cider sauce. All right, kind of, uh, kind of does have a little bit of those worst sheer notes coming through. Uh, getting kind of, uh, yeah, almost that like kind of smoky from those chipotles, but kind of giving it that molasses type quality as well. Because I'm really getting a sweet hit coming up from that. It smells like a, it smells like it might be a, a good. Steak sauce for a grilled steak, yeah. And, uh, of course, get a little tang from the vinegar, which we can see is pretty abundant. So, hey, without further ado, guys, uh, let's give this guy a roll. Again, pouring really thin and liquidy. And uh, nothing else happening there, just kind of that deep brown liquidy body. Here we go. Gale's Hard Cider Sauce. Mmm. Okay, wow, yeah. Um, actually, some flecks of something other going on in there. So there's some solids in that liquid that I couldn't see due to the due to the dark color of this. But so not wholly liquid. Again, there is a, some minor pieces floating around in there. 
Um, yeah, the front kind of have a sweet, kind of that sweet, almost molasses type, uh, type uh, notes coating the tongue right off the bat, mixed right in there with that the smokiness of of those peppers. Um, yeah, chipotle is coming through again, getting kind of that tangy, zesty zing to it uh, that you would uh, come to expect from a uh, from a, uh, a Worcestershire type sauce. This one here, packing quite a bit of flavor, really coming through. All those flavors really coming through to uh, really uh, the nth degree there, coming and uh, kind of all blending together to give a really positive experience here with this right off the bat. Wow, a grilled uh, a grilled cheeseburger or a sirloin burger or, or a steak, like I said. Wow, this probably hit the spot. But perfectly with something like that, uh, really kind of leaving that uh, zesty flavors in the mouth. Concentration again, kind of on the uh, on those smoky chipotles, um, and kind of actually bringing forth almost a little bit of. I don't know if it's my imagination again, but again, I don't think so. Maybe a little bit of that whiskeyish character seeping through there, even though there's probably no alcohol in this at all. Kind of still retaining probably some of those hard cider flavors coming through there. Don't know if I can really, uh, really uh, point out the apples so much in this guy, but uh, maybe that flavor, uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, alcoholic whiskeyish flavor coming through there, uh, may have something to do with that hard cider. But basically, uh, more about the sweetness, more about the smokiness of those chipotle peppers and. Uh, a little bit of that tang going on again. Uh, Heat-wise, not much going on. Uh, kind of a small glow kind of coating the back of the tongue area. Uh, but uh, really nothing heavy heat-wise. Uh, more again, uh, focusing on uh, on those uh, kind of uh, Worcestershire-like flavors. And uh, with uh, Mild and Wild sauces, uh, we had a few in the past. Uh, well, quite a few, uh, most of them being really, really, really flavorful, particularly their natural sauces. Uh, uh, don't care too much for the extract stuff we had from them, uh, but then again, I don't care for extract sauces in general, so uh, that's nothing new and uh, nothing I can hold against them because extract sauces are what they are, extract sauces. So, But this one here, all natural, uh, kind of giving us... Uh, Again, some really good, uh, good grilling flavors here, and very reminiscent of a Worcestershire sauce. So, hey, I'm gonna wrap it with Dale's hard cider sauce. Kind of, uh, kind of. That's all that I have to say about it. Just kind of leaving that nice little faint glow in my mouth. Some of the tangy flavors still withstanding. A little bit of that smoky note going on right now, picking up on those chipotles. Sweetness kind of died down, so while I have those lovely flavors in my mouth at this minute, hey, let's talk. Uh, last uh, last show, I just kind of briefly, generally talked about uh, uh, about the Earth Day versus Easter thing that happened over the weekend, kind of discussing the uh, rational, secular, humanist type Earth Day holiday as compared to the Christian holiday of Easter. Uh, and uh, again, just briefly went through that, and I was going to stop there, uh, but hey, uh, I found it just an interesting subject, because today I, I, I found this article just coming on, uh, yeah, very close to Easter, just kind of post-Easter here, uh, I grabbed this out of the numerous liberal sections in our newspaper here, and this one is Heaven, Hell, and Religion. Okay, by Ross Douthat, or however you pronounce that, okay, I don't know. Uh, this particular writer, usually every holiday he writes some kind of semi-demeaning thing, uh, kind of attacking Christianity. He did one at Christmas, and I didn't cover that one, uh, but uh, this one here around Easter time. Uh, I'm not going to cover his letter today per se, but, uh, but there's some 
points that are made in here, not necessarily in context with in context with what he's talking about here, but uh, definitely points being made which relate kind of to the subject that we were talking to talking about last program. Or